I'm Dr. Lauren Gerson, an Associate Professor of Medicine and Gastroenterology at Stanford University School of Medicine. I've been asked by the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology to discuss my paper entitled Complications Associated with Double Balloon Enteroscopy, the United States Experience. This research would not have been possible without my collaborators. They included Jeff Tokar and Ole Halushka from Fox Chase Cancer Center, Simon Lowe from Cedars-Sinai Medical Center, Anton Decker and Jonathan Layton from the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale, David Cave from University of Massachusetts, Buhadar Dumit and Alvin Zoss from the University of Virginia, Daniel Mishkin from Boston University Medical Center, Charles Dye and Carol Semrad from University of Chicago. Double balloon enteroscopy allows for deep examination of the small bowel using a 200 centimeter enteroscope and a 140 centimeter over tube. Both are equipped with balloons. Using serial inflation and deflation of the balloons, the, endos the endoscopist is able to deeply traverse the small bowel either from the anterograde or the retrograde approach. Potential complications associated with double balloon enteroscopy include those related to standard endoscopy, including aspiration pneumonia and complications associated with sedation. Uh, double balloon related abdominal cramping has been reported in approximately 2 to 20 percent of cases and may be decreased with the usage of carbon dioxide. Complications potentially increase with double balloon enteroscopy may include perforation, pancreatitis, and bleeding. The purpose of our study, therefore, was to determine if the rate of perforation associated with double balloon enteroscopy exceeded rates associated with standard endoscopic procedures and to determine what those risk factors for perforation might be. We also wondered whether the incidence of pancreatitis and bleeding were increased associated with double balloon enteroscopy. This slide shows perforation benchmarks associated with standard endoscopic procedures. Typically, colonoscopy has a rate of perforation of approximately 1 in 1,000 or 0.1 percent. Diagnostic endoscopy, about 1 in 10,000 or 0.01 percent. And for double balloon enteroscopy, there have not been many studies. One study published by Peter Mensink involving approximately 2,300 double balloons showed a perforation rate of 0.3%. In another study published by Andrea May, uh, where they looked at double balloon endoscopy performed for therapeutic reasons and performed polypectomy for large polyps, the perforation rate was approximately 1.7%. Looking at the published literature from 2004 to 2008, of approximately 2,400 double balloons, there were five perforations for a rate of 0.2%. And cases with perforation included a patient with lymphoma undergoing chemotherapy, a peristomal perforation in a patient with a fresh ileostomy, uh, and some patients undergoing cauteries of AVMs. In order to perform this study, we obtained human subjects panel approval in all institutions, and we maintained a database uh, demonstrating the type of double balloon that was performed and diagnostic and therapeutic maneuvers. For each complication, we maintained uh, details about um, the complication. Perforation was defined as the presence of pneumoperitoneum with or without abdominal pain and GI bleeding of required hospitalization. This next slide shows the data from the nine centers. We essentially had 2,478 double balloons, 68% from the oral approach, 29% from the retrograde approach. There were 22 complications for a rate of 0.9%. Perforation occurred in 11 cases or 0.4%. From the oral approach, there were uh, three perforations, and the retrograde approach, eight perforations for a rate of 1.2%, and pancreatitis and bleeding occurred in approximately 0.2% of the patients. The next slide shows the details of the double balloon examinations. Um, both anterograde and retrograde diagnostic examinations involved biopsy in approximately 20 to 25% of cases. In the therapeutic cases, which were approximately 663, um, Biopsy occurred in 11% of the anterograde cases, 22% of the retrograde cases, and 77% of the anterograde cases involved polypectomy. 10% uh, of the cases had APC for arteriovenous malformations compared to 28% of the retrograde examinations. The next slide details the cases with perforation. Uh, there was a trend towards uh, perforation occurring more commonly in patients who had altered surgical anatomy as demonstrated here. The other trend was that they were more likely to have perforations in patients undergoing polypectomy, and in fact, two perforations during the retrograde approach occurred during polypectomy of carcinoid tumors. 
In summary, looking at patients with altered surgical anatomy, the perforation rate was 3%. In the oral double balloon examinations, uh, one out of 159 cases with altered surgical anatomy had a perforation. Interestingly enough, in the patients with the retrograde double balloon, the perforation rate was approximately 10%. Of eight patients who had ileal anal anastomoses, perforation occurred in four out of eight for a rate of 50%. And there was one perforation in a patient with a peristomal anatomy. Actually, there were five of those cases, making a rate of 20%. So in summary, uh, the risk of perforation was greater in the retrograde examinations compared to the oral. 73% uh, of the perforations actually occurred in diagnostic double balloon examinations. And as mentioned, in patients with altered surgical anatomy, the perforation rate was approximately 3%. Other complications include pancreatitis in six patients. One patient developed pancreatitis after an oral, after a retrograde double balloon. Uh, one patient developed a cecal volvulus, and bleeding occurred in approximately four patients. In conclusion, this double balloon entroscopy appears to be safe for the majority of patients. However, what is novel about this study is that there is an increased perforation, particularly in patients with altered surgical anatomy. Uh, other perforations have been shown to be occurring in the literature in patients undergoing stricture dilation and in patients with weakened abdominal walls from either inflammatory bowel disease or neoplastic disorders. And based upon our data, patients with ileoanal anastomoses are a relative contraindication for retrograde double balloon examination. Thank you very much for your attention.